So today's topic is the uncreated and um, so we spend our whole lifetime with creating things. That's what we are mostly doing as a human being when we are born we start creating we go to school we go to kindergarten maybe first and to school always trying to get somewhere to achieve something to get to the next level constantly uh, searching the created maybe even right now in this moment you can notice this kind of internal habit to search how can I create myself into a better person maybe or how can I create a better life this is something that all of us have this sense of trying to get somewhere to achieve it's a matter of success or failure that was a good meditation we say when we feel good or that was a bad meditation when we feel bad I had a lot of pain in my body today that was a bad meditation so we are looking for this created state this artificial state in which we are continuously supposed to feel good so we're busy trying to create this state of life that is in a, in a way very static almost like out of a fantasy movie that state that is supposed to be kind of the solution to all problems you might search for that uh, in your work in your relationship you might search for that in meditation your spiritual life searching for something that is supposed to complete you and of course everything that we know in this world is created it is caused it is made fabricated dependent you can also say all the things in this world they're dependent on their causes the tree is dependent on its seeds cloud is dependent on water anger is dependent on its own causes namely anger sadness is depending on sadness to nourish itself keeping itself alive and so forth so everything is in a way dependent connected to each other And it works like this so that's all we know really what we perceive with our five senses what we perceive with our thinking mind with our intellect all of it is made created composed compounded so when we mention something like the uncreated the timeless then we are usually ending up quite confused. What does that mean, the timeless? What is it? Where is it? The uncreated, what is it, right? It's kind of confusing. It's something that we, it's not really obvious to us. Some of the most natural things are those things that we completely miss we totally miss the point for example your own being the fact that you are yeah that's it the fact that you are not something not someone that just that very basic fact that there is something there that exists right now we miss that most of the time because we are chasing it or chasing that state or chasing the being 
we say is, uh, things like, if you just do enough, then you can be fill in the blank. But you still need to do a lot, so you can be. You're not there yet, right? There's still a lot of stuff to be done. There's many things to get rid of and many things also to accumulate. You're not done yet. It feels like this, doesn't it? Somehow we sit here in this room and there's this inner feeling of not done yet. Not there yet. And even though that is not true at all, it feels true. So we look forward, we say, see you later. I'm really looking forward to my holidays or the next retreat or whatever it is that we're looking forward to. Because that will complete you. The next task, the next thing, the next creation, the next personality. Because the personality right now is not quite it yet. It's kind of, it's flawed, isn't it? It feels like this. It feels like, yeah, the personality, the me, sense of self, yeah, well, it could be better. Could be a bit more patient and less annoyed, maybe a bit happier. So these kind of things attract us very much, like the promise of happiness. You put it on a flashy photoshopped sign, that promises you that once you look like that, then your life will be very good. It makes us put filters on our pictures and chase for likes. Not only online, but also in our, in our normal life, chasing for approval, or chasing for all these created dependent things in the hope that the next thing then will do the job. And this is something that kind of happens unconsciously on a subconscious level. We're not really conscious of it. If you would be conscious of it, it, it couldn't sustain itself for very long. It has to happen in the background. Like a habit. It's like a, some sort of automatism. It just runs. The example would be like an app in the background of your phone. It just runs. But you don't notice because it's not in the foreground. It's not making particular noise like, hey, I'm unfulfilled and I'm looking for fulfillment. This is not a predominant thought that we have. Rather, our predominant thought would be masking that. Like, hey, I'm having fun. Or... Mm, life is awesome. I have so many possibilities. Like that. So life appears like a fun park with endless possibilities. And so that is the, it's hiding the underlying fact of us being continuously unsatisfied with how it is. And the fun park is very appealing to that because it masks it masks our pain, which makes us run from attraction to attraction to attraction to attraction to attraction to attraction, spinning around and around and around, never really realizing that all life really has to offer is breathing in and breathing out. That's it. It's not linear. It's cyclic. We think, if we do the right thing, then, then we, we end up at level B and then everything will be fine. And from that B level onward, we just move up to C. Totally flawless, linear movement. It's very promising, this fantasy. The, the future holds uh, your happiness. All you need to do is go get it. That is, 
even you know you have people who use this in motivational speeches stand up fight for yourself you can realize all your dreams you can be uh, who you want to be but what they really say is you're not enough yet isn't it no you're not beautiful enough yet you're not good enough yet you must get more and you need to become more it has an entire generation of people chasing for the unreachable moving round and round and round and round why does it work because we don't see it the same reason for why a dream works because you don't know you're dreaming life works the way it does you feel the way you do you experience what you do experience because something runs the show and that something looks to fulfill itself let's say you hold a lot of anger and anxiety that anger and anxiety it will run your life and it will look to fulfill itself so you will constantly encounter situations that match up with it you will meet things that make you angry and anxious because that's what anger and anxiety needs it needs to feed and it feeds through your life situations and your life story of who you are and who you're supposed to be and who you were there's this story going on all the time the story about yourself me being like this trying to get there and it kind of repeats all the time doesn't it yeah i'm still not done yet i'm still there and when will I ever be enlightened? Like this, you know. That would be my kind of story. Uh, I'm still not enlightened. It's another day, I'm going to die soon. Like this. <laughs> and all it is, is just a story in the head. But there's as many instances during the day where I do not recognize it as that. It feels much more solid and much more real, much more important and heavy it feels like i am the one that tells the story i'm the i am the one that suffers life and i'm also the one that needs to create some sort of tool or vehicle to get out of that suffering it's a huge struggle and it will never work because we are constantly looking in the realm of the created. So we will never find the uncreated there. So proper question to ask would be then, where is the uncreated? What is the uncreated? How can I find it? How can you find something that doesn't require you to do anything? Can you feel that? What is it right now that doesn't need any doing? Have you ever wondered about these kind of things? Are you ever asking yourself like this? Sitting in Tony's restaurant over there, wondering what right now doesn't do anything and it doesn't need to do anything. Is there something inside of you that doesn't require more doing? And you will notice it's your nature that doesn't require more doing. It is your being that doesn't require doing. The most fundamental aspect of your life this presence this simple fact of being here that it doesn't require any further doing it is complete and perfect in itself 
Your being is perfect. You're, you're a perfect being. But if you measure and judge yourself based on doing, wow, there's much to be done, isn't there? There's much left for me to be done. I still need to do this and I still didn't do that and I'm not complete enough yet. I'm, you know, this, this sort of thing. That happens if you measure yourself by the created. Oh, I need to create more. Can you feel it right now as you listen to that, these words? Can you feel that there is a very simple, very humble, subtle in a way, it's not obvious, it's just this sense of I am. You can use that, these two words, I am, you can use them to reflect on this I am. You don't add anything at the back of these two words. Not I'm a man, I'm a woman, uh, that would be identified with the body, or I am uh, depressed, or I am Toby. This is just simply I am. And you can feel this. You can tap into this sense of being. And that means that you learn, step by step, to accept how it is. to accept that life is breathing in and out. Maybe right now, in the time of your life, you're not happy. Can you accept it? Or do you still feel that life has to be constantly happy, actually? That everything is, needs to be only success and only health? That, is, that would be... Um, suffering from a delusional idea that life only needs to serve you all the time. But it is not like that. It doesn't just always... Life is not here to constantly fulfill your wish. That would be catastrophic. Imagine that. If life would be here to constantly fulfill all of our wishes, this world would be a huge mess, even worse than it is now. <laughs> Fortunately, life is not just constantly fulfilling your wishes. It is, uh, it's going its own way, dependent on cause and result, right? There's a cause, there's a result. If there's water, there is steam. Due to the rising of steam, there is then rain later on causing more water. It's a perfect cycle. It works. And it works whether you, you stand down here and you say, I hate the rain, it's enough now. Uh, it's been raining for two weeks straight. I want to see some sunshine. Weather doesn't care. <laughs> Still does its thing. It does its thing dependent on its causes, not dependent on you complaining about it. Your feelings are exactly the same. Your thoughts are exactly the same. Are you daring enough? Or let's ask it differently. Do you trust yourself enough to leave yourself alone? <laughs> I ask again, do you trust yourself enough to leave yourself alone, to take your hands off. That is real practice. You sit down and you accept. And you realize nothing lasts. You slowly get used to that. Sitting down, seeing clearly, arising, changing, passing. Not me, not mine. Seeing that repeatedly, you will notice 
that there is something that sees. There's something in the background that is just simply aware. That just knows. That is conscious. You can sense it right now. Nothing complicated. Not a matter of the intellect. You can feel that there is something that's just simply conscious. Again, it's very humble. It's not loud and noisy like everything else in life. It is very humble. Everything comes to present itself to your consciousness, to this consciousness. Whether it is depression coming up, what is aware of depression? Sadness, happiness, joy, laughter, talking, being quiet. What is aware of it? Some people complain, my mind is talking all the time. Well, who is it talking to? It's talking to me. And what is it? Me. That, you can say, at the center of yourself, if you want to use a little bit of an un-Buddhist uh, terminology, at the center of yourself, that is the uncreated. The unmade, unfabricated. And we find it because we want to find it. We're hungry for it. And we're hungry for it because we suffer. We need a way out. Just like in a prison, if you have those inmates who have a great time, let's say there are some gang leaders, have a great time. They get all the drugs, all the cigarettes, they have control over the guards, they have control over the other inmates. They get what they want. They're kind of fine. The thought of breaking out of prison is not predominant in their mind. But those who are at the other end of the stick, they want to get out badly. And they can they can think of anything else just day and night. How do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? That is the blessing of life. Suffering is a blessing. Pain is a blessing. For some, uh, not for everyone, but for some. It opens the door to freedom, to complete liberation from suffering. For others, it's just more self that comes out of pain, more me. Poor me, poor me, poor me. So they have something to feel more uh, me and myself and my problems. So they keep creating pain so they can feel like they are a real self. That also exists. But for some people it's kind of enough. They've been on the fun ride and vomited right afterwards too many times already. <laughs> They got, the, they got the message. It's enough. Enough up and down. Enough tunnel and light at the end of the tunnel and next tunnel. And light at the end of the tunnel and next tunnel. Enough of it. I want to get out. For good. To go beyond pain, beyond suffering. So for some people pain can be that motivating factor. Makes you hungry to touch what is uncreated, to taste your true nature, who you really are. For too many people, uh, they are lost in playing with the toys that life has to offer. Endless possibilities. Think of a computer game, they get more and more complex. 
computer games. You can walk through whole cities, you can do whatever you want. Getting more and more. And that is very attractive. This, the huge possibilities that we have. It keeps us tied to the screen for days and weeks and months on end. Not even bothering that the whole room becomes more and more dirty and we're not seeing any sunlight anymore. We don't even know the time of the day anymore. Totally lost in the game. Like that. Keeps us busy. Life is like this. Endless possibilities. You could become anyone. You get anything and then continue the questioning and then I'll be a successful businessman and then and then I, uh, I will set up an empire and then uh, well we don't think far we don't think that far very often <laughs> and then I will uh, help many people and then um, I will find myself a nice wife and uh, have a family and then keep asking and then and then and then where will you arrive look at your life how many and thens later where will you arrive where will you be done how much more do you need to be yourself It's time to rest and just be. I think is enough for today. Are there any questions?